Hello, I'm Odin, and let's make another requested prop. It's Wonder Woman Shield. But this time, I'm not just gonna make one shield, I'm gonna make two. I like patterns, and to make a pattern, I need a form. Sometimes it's easy, like the helmet, where you can just start with a head. But the best I could do for a shield is a snow sled saucer, which honestly has about the right size and shape. So if you want an easy shield, buy one of those and repaint it. After centering a quarter inch carriage bolt onto my plywood, I draw the profile of a shield onto a thinner piece of plywood and carefully cut it out on the bandsaw and sand it to a smooth shape. I attach half a door hinge to the center of my profile. Then, making sure the edge is flat to the bottom, I can measure where the top of the shield will be on the carriage bolt and mark that with a couple of nuts and a washer. Now I know that if the bottom is flat and the hinge is on the washer, I will have the correct three-dimensional shape when I spin the profile around. Now to fill the void and make a shield shape. I start by cutting some styrofoam into rings. I hot glue them onto the plywood so they won't move. Two layers will fill most of the void and I trim the edges so the profile piece will miss the styrofoam. To actually get the shape that I want, I mix up some plaster of Paris and cover the styrofoam. The plaster will stick to the rough edges of the foam and it sticks pretty well to plywood. And by scraping the wet plaster with the profile shape, the shield starts to actually take form. It takes a few coats to get it right, but once it's close, I'm good to make a pattern. Now I could keep going like this, adding plaster or even wall patch and sanding it down so it's perfect. And I could cut off the bolt and make a fiberglass mold. Then I could lay up fiberglass shields. But all I need is a pattern so I can make a shield from EVA foam. With the form covered in aluminum foil and duct tape, I find a 90 degree angle with the speed square and the factory edge of the plywood. I then mark a quarter of the shield using the profile piece as a straight edge. And the corner of the plywood is halfway between those two marks, so I need to make a mark of my pattern there, and then I'll center up two more marks in between all of those. These will end up being darts in the pattern, so I can remove foam and get that last okay. bit of extra curve on the shield. I can also use the profile board to mark the circles I want for the decorative pattern that goes on the shield. I know that each of the side legs will be a little different because they're hand cut, so I mark them A and B, and I add notch marks for lining up the foam later. I remove the duct tape foil and cut out the darts until it all lays flat. Then I transfer the pattern to a piece of poster board. That way I can cut down the original and get patterns for the inner circle marks as well. I trace the patterns onto pieces of EVA floor mat and cut them out. I use a heat gun to curl the edges for the shield and start gluing everything together with a contact cement. I glue A to A and B to B and I match up all the notch marks to avoid buckling the foam. Because it's a curved 90 degree angle, when the final seam is pulled together, the convex shape comes back. And I cut a ring of foam and glue it to the inside to help reinforce the seams and stiffen the foam shield. I need a piece inside to attach the straps to, so I use a piece of poster board as a compass and I mark a 20 inch circle and cut it out. Then I lay my arm down and mark where I think straps should go. I bought some belts from the thrift store, which is cheap, but the buckles won't match, so I didn't use them. I measure each part, cut them out, and glue them down. Then, to be sure there's a good hold, I bolt the straps on too, with big fender washers on the back. Once I'm happy with the inner piece, I can glue it in with contact cement. The face of the shield has a pretty intricate Art Deco sunburst pattern. I cut the shapes I need from three millimeter craft foam. Starting with the center disc, I make 16 rays to go around out to the first circle mark. Then I cut out a second set of 16 and place them in between the first set. I mark each one specifically and trim it so that they'll fit correctly when they're glued on. Then I want thinner craft foam for that inner texture. I score this foam every quarter inch and then cut triangles to fit in between the orange sun rays. It's hard to see here, but the lines are parallel with the inner rays. I ran out of yellow two millimeter foam and I started using white. The chevrons that run around the outside was a little easier. I made a paper pattern and cut the three millimeter foam. I knew where they needed to go because of the darts for the curve at the edge. I happened to make 16 darts and there are 16 chevrons. I wish I could say that I planned that beforehand. I was just lucky this time. As I glued the orange foam on, I would trim corners and be sure the chevrons would all fit. That way I could avoid one really skinny one at the end. Now there's a leaf-like pattern inside of each chevron. 
and some two millimeter craft foam will work for that. I also scored the inside and outside edges of each piece. All of these score marks will open up when I use a heat gun on them later. Now just this art deco process took about three hours. I use the heat gun on low so I don't burn the foam, but just heat it up enough to melt it a little and open it up on the score marks and widen the gaps between each piece. After these are spray painted, a wash of watered down paint will fill each of these lines and make them very easy to see. To seal the foam and get a good base coat of color, I cover the shield in Plasti Dip spray paint. I use multiple light coats to keep it from running and dripping. I let the Plasti Dip dry for a few hours. Then I started to tape off the plain ring in the center. I want that to stay black. The rest gets spray painted in antique gold color. I need to be careful peeling off the tape because it can pull in the Plasti Dip a little bit and blister it up, which I don't want. But Plasti Dip grips the porous foam really well and the few blisters I did get, I didn't worry about. I paint the edges black. This seemed like it'd be faster than taping them off, and I think it was. I can also correct any gold mistakes from the spray paint. Then I can start to black wash the whole shield. All I'm doing here is wetting down the shield with water and then painting over it with watered down black acrylic paint. Just keep the paint from pooling and wipe off any high areas you don't want too dark. It's really pretty simple to do, and if you make a big mistake, just sponge off the wash while it's wet and try again. I wanted to dry brush some gold highlights, but you really can't see them. I'll, I'll just pretend that it made a difference. I add some brown wash onto the black so it's not too clean. Once all the washes are dry completely, I spray clear coat over everything to seal the acrylic. And this is how Odin makes a big mistake. I forgot to reduce the pattern when I actually cut the parts out. You see, I made the form at 30 inches so I could make any shield from it, but Wonder Woman shield should be 24 inches, and I didn't reduce the pattern when I built this. I got excited. So I'm gonna try again. I'll reduce the paper pattern and make a new shield that's the right size. I'll use the label for the floor mats to make a new pattern. I trace just the A side of my first pattern, flip it over, and trace the A side again. Now both legs are the same, but I add the notches anyway. I make a poster board compass again and make marks at 13 and a half, 12 and nine inches. To find the centers to make the darts, I just fold the package label and mark the creases. I guessed on how wide to make the darts. These were about 3 16 of an inch at the bottom. This time I can get two pieces of shield from one floor mat. I can make this whole shield from one package of mat. The bigger shield took two packages. After gluing all the pieces together, I tried to fill the seams with quick seal. That's an acrylic based bathroom sealant that is flexible. Then I dab Mod Podge over the center twice to get that heavy texture. This time I'm going to add two rings on the inside and cut a circle out for the straps. I make just two straps so I can cut everything from one belt and keep the buckle. Now it fits on my arm on the last hole so it should fit anyone else's arm, even if they have bracers on. I let the grip be at an angle. It actually felt better. I cut holes through the foam and glue the belt on the inside and then fill all the seams in with PVA wood glue. I make a quick pattern for strap braces, cut them from five millimeter foam, super glue a piece to the top, and use a stone on my Dremel to make little rivet holes. Then I glue them all down and let the wood glue dry. I didn't really like how flexible the foam disc was, so I glued the wood left over from my profile cut onto the backside with the widest part at the wrist. Yeah, that's a lot better. There is a raised ring around the outside of the shield. I bought a roll of two millimeter foam from Michael's Crafts and I drew out a circle and cut it out. There are holes in this ring, so I sharpened the inside of a copper pipe with a file and punched 16 holes all around the ring. Now I just need to glue it onto the shield and I thought that if I went carefully and slowly, I could get the ring on straight. But context of it really likes to stick. Ah, come on. Shit. Oh. So I cut another ring, punch more holes, add the glue, and cover the damn glue on the shield with some paper. Now I can position the ring where I want it and remove pieces of paper to stick down small sections at a time. It still wasn't that easy. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. But it worked way better than my first try. I glued the punch outs like big rivets on the inside panel, glued the panel to the shield, and taped off the belts so they would not get plastic dipped. After a few coats of plastic dip, I thought I would brush on the gold instead of all that taping. 
I didn't want to ruin the texture on accident. I let some black show through the gold. It added a good texture. I also painted the strap braces gold and painted the rivets on the inside silver. The edge of this shield has pseudo ancient Greek writing on it. So I placed the shield on a lazy Susan and propped up my arm to keep it steady. Then I just wrote the letters on with some dimensional craft paint. It dries a much richer color than when it's wet, kind of like Elmer's glue. I looked at pictures of the prop and toy online for the letters and guessed placement by the holes in the gold ring. In the end, I was only a little bit short, so I added one eye to fill in the blank spot. There is a ring of gold outside of the letters, so I used the Lazy Susan again to spin the shield under the brush. It was actually very easy to do. Lastly, I added the silver compass points all around the outside. All the parts to make these projects were picked up locally, and I put a part list in the description. The patterns are there too. You can use the patterns to make just about any shield, because most of these have the same profile, but just different finishes. Now we've seen lots of different ways that you can build a shield, but this is how Odin makes. I now have a Patreon page, which will give you the chance to win props that are made right here in Odin Makes. And it's the only place where I'll talk about my upcoming builds. If you like the video or have ideas for something for me to make, please leave them in the comments below. And if you make any of these projects, you can send me a picture at odin at odinmakes.com. Oh, we should make bulletproof armbands. Easiest way to do that, is take a poster tube and cut it up. And we're done.